In today's video, we're gonna check out a new camera from Insta360. This is going to be the Go 3. I'm a big fan of pretty much everything that Insta360 makes, so when they announced this little guy, I was very intrigued. When you get the Go 3, it comes in a really nice package with a few handy accessories. There's a pivot stand for attaching to quarter 20 mounts. There's also a sticky mount that comes with a protector, and also a neat necklace kind of thing that is magnetic for using the camera as a body cam. But my current favorite accessory is this clip that can clip onto a hat or a helmet visor. It gives you a really cool first person point of view that you really can't get with anything else. The camera itself is very portable and cute, and kind of reminds Reminds me of the creatures from Among Us. Anyway, let's go try this out. Take a couple of the accessories too. Probably gonna rain soon, but we are gonna try to knock out some video to test out this camera. And we're gonna use the LS Swap Dotson 620 because it's such a nice test vehicle. I haven't driven this truck in a couple weeks. You can see that some water is built up in here because it's been raining non-stop for like the last month. I use this truck for a lot of the testing on the Insta360 X3, so I figured it would be good for the, the Go 3. It's really hard to explain what this truck feels like while driving, so I think if we do a point of view shot off of my hat, it might be kind of cool. It'll almost be like a Datsun 620 with an LS simulator. This hat's my old Hoonigan hat. I got this hat a couple years ago doing a burnout at the Donut Garage very far away from home in my Mustang. I should probably get a replacement because I don't wear hats often, but this thing is just worn out and dirty. The clip goes on pretty easy. Then we're gonna take the smaller part of the camera off of the main base. Now you can kind of look at yourself. Is it gonna do like a cool feedback thing? Yeah, it will. Nice. One of those trippy effects. There's a little bit of latency to this which you can kind of see on camera. The more stabilization you add, the more latency you're going to get. I usually hate latency, but it's really nice to have this as a monitor. But anyway, uh, let's go for a small drive. You have to make sure that the camera is the right way in the mount. It's magnetic, and if it's reversed, it's not going to stick as much. But now it's nice and secure. And now I look like some sort of weird cyborg. This might be a cool setup for going to a Cars and Coffee, but I don't know if I would walk around with this on my head. You can get different colored covers for this thing, so if you want to have it blacked out and be a little less conspicuous, you can do that. But we're not going to worry about all that for this testing. I do wish that everything came in a case, but it does not. I'm sure Insta360 will come out with a nice case soon enough or you could just use a small bag which I'll probably wind up doing fuel that's our fan we really don't need right now because it's it's not gonna be warmed up give it a couple pumps because it is carbureted we'll give it a couple seconds to warm up and then we'll go for a small drive it should be fun if it stays running this will also be a really good test because this is probably the loudest vehicle I have it's old 70s sheet metal with an LS, not much in the way of mufflers, so if you can hear me talk, that's a good representation of what it would sound like if you were doing reviews with race cars. I hate being loud and obnoxious going through a neighborhood on a Sunday morning, but I feel like a lot of the cars that drive through my neighborhood are way worse. You see everybody's at church today. I don't want to ruin the sermons or whatever. This truck has some pretty skinny tires up front, and the shocks aren't very tight, set up very loose, so yeah. Hopefully you can hear my voice pretty good with this camera, because this would make for the ultimate car review camera, where you could just wear a hat and be able to talk about the car. I know you can run a GoPro with just like a chin mount or one of those head straps, but this is just way more convenient to put it on a hat. This would be a good test for the stabilization with all these rough roads. I don't know why that Mustang's facing the wrong way on the street, but that's scary. Oh, somebody lost their bag of Doritos. The spicy chili ones, too. Where's the cops? They're probably looking at me. Probably thinking I'm looking at my phone. Can you hear the exhaust nicely? It sounds nice in here. I'm not sure if people are looking at me with this camera on my head thinking 
that something's mentally wrong with me while I talk to myself. That guy was way too far into my f***ing lane. Roll into a pole. God, this truck's fun. Too much traffic to do anything too stupid. Recently thought about selling this truck so I could buy a new motor for the Mustang, but it's too much fun. I love this truck so much. I should probably rotate this down just a little. Probably should have had that rotated down the whole time, but whatever. Because my dash is metal and the base is magnetic, I could just run this as a monitor. But I think it would fall off. And uh, I just bought this camera, so I don't want to try. Really don't want to break the screen on this. So we're going to put it down here. After traffic clears up, we're going to do one pull from 0 to 50, because that's what the speed limit says. We'll see if this camera really conveys what it's like to do a full pull. I want to get this review done, but I should really take this thing drag racing and drifting. Which I will at some point, but not for this review. Let's spin in a little bit. So you want to run this on the dash, you can just slap it up here because it's magnetic and the dash is metal. Just make sure that you got the view right. That's actually a pretty good angle, but I doubt that you can hear me. Wide angle also makes my belly look extra big, I guess. I am getting kind of fat. Let's see how strong the magnet is by doing one small pull. Just one more. One more pull. Nice and quick. This is 361X3 was really nice at isolating vocals, but I'm not sure how this is going to do, especially being kind of far away. be really good for racing people but there's nobody out there to race picking up all the rocks Sometimes forget just how sticky, sticky tires get. I'm surprised these things are still kicking, honestly. Which is good, because drag radials are expensive. Because this camera's so small, you can fit this in different areas that you couldn't get a normal camera. Like, if I wanted to inspect whatever's going on inside of this side marker, I could do that as long as I don't drop it. <laughs> I've never really looked in there before, and now I can. This would also be cool if you had an open fog light hole, like with a turbo or something. It'd be a cool shot to just get in there. But I don't have that, so at least not yet. Somebody give me a big turbo setup or something for this thing. I'd have to remove all this, but it would be worth it. You could also tuck this camera inside the engine bay pretty easy. And even hide it somewhere if you want to do a long time lapse of people looking under your hood or something. It seems to be one of the latest things to put a camera under your hood and film people's reactions to your crazy swap. You should still put a sign up. You really don't want to film anybody without consent. That's just creepy. Another thing I noticed with this camera is that you can get super close to stuff and it's still in focus. I'm probably about an inch and a half from this Holly logo and it films it pretty nicely. Gives you all the details of what's going on. You can even go inside the valley of the intake manifold. It's still pretty hot under there, so I don't want to go too far because I am burning my hands and probably melting the camera, but it's a pretty cool shot. Really can't think of another way to get that shot except for having the Go 3. It's the first time I've taken the air cleaner off. I never realized this plate was here. That's pretty cool. Let's look inside the carb. No idea what's going on in there. I'm used to fuel injection. One of the reasons I never got any of these Go cameras was because the battery life was pretty limited. This one charges off of the base. I guess the Go 2 also did. But the battery life so far seems to be really decent. My only complaint with this camera so far is that you have to order it with 
the amount of memory you want. So this one is the 64 gig. It goes up to 120 gig. 120 gigs is probably enough, but 64 is not quite as much as I would like. It means I gotta carry around some sort of storage with me. Take a laptop or, a, or an iPad and transfer files, but I kinda understand with everything going in such a small package why they did it that way, but I just kinda wish it had a, a little micro SD slot. Not necessarily a deal breaker, but just something to keep in mind if you're buying this camera. Another one of my small complaints is that you can't have the camera away from the base very far. I was hoping to use this as a backup camera to get my trailer on my truck, and the camera wound up disconnecting and I just wound up hitting my trailer. With the Go 3, there's a few different modes. You can do video, freeform video, time lapse, time shift, slow motion, loop recording, star lapse, interval, HDR photo. Don't, don't do HDR photos regular photos, and regular video. Freeform video is going to give you the option to edit in post if you want to have it vertical or horizontal. I'm going to do a couple clips with the 2011 Mustang. This had some oil issues, and I think that the Go 3 will actually help me out because I don't know where the oil was coming from. So we're going to try to mount the camera securely under the hood and see where it's actually leaking. So hopefully the Go 3 solves my troubleshooting issues because that would be really cool. Supercharger in there. So let's see if this actually starts and see what we can find. So now we're putting a lot of faith in this magnet. It's body steel, obviously. So we're going to try to mount the camera on this inner fender well and see if we can find out where the oil is actually coming from. I think it was coming from the breather, but we're going to find out today by putting this camera low because there's a slight chance that it's coming from the valve cover, but it really looked like it was coming from the breather. So we're going to have to do a couple pretty aggressive pulls. I'm not sure how much I should trust this magnet, but I don't know. The other option is to do the sticky mount, but I'm not sure if that's going to hold either. I might be taking a big risk here. I really feel like I need a secondary mount. impressed with how well this picks up voices while being in a loud car and the image quality is also really impressive for the size if you want to check out the go 3 for yourself i'll have some affiliate links in the description below but thanks for watching and have a great day